Welcome to this miniature rescue video where we'll be restoring this old orc dreadnought. So I picked up this old orc dreadnought up from Troll Trader and um, as you can see he's not quite complete. So I had to go to eBay to find the rest of the model um, and we'll proceed to strip him down and uh, put him back together. So the first job then is to give him a little bath to take off the paint that is currently on the miniature. Uh, to do this, I'm gonna be using a um, acetone-free nail varnish remover from Wilco. So I've allowed the model to soak for about two or three days just to allow the nail varnish remover to really get into that existing paintwork. To be fair, you could probably leave it only for a couple of hours and it'll just drip off. As you can see, it just comes off so easily using this stuff. Um, it's probably my go, well it is my go-to way of stripping metal miniatures. Don't use this for plastic miniatures. You will just, me it will just melt your plastic miniatures. Okay, so once I've given the miniature a good scrub down with the brush, it comes out good as new. All that's left now to do is to remove the mold lines uh, ready for fitting. So before gluing the model together, I'm just gonna dry fit it to make sure it all fits together nicely. Uh, where it doesn't, I'll just give it a good fold down. So to help to get a more precise application of glue, I like to use cocktail sticks just to be able to place the glue in position. This prevents over gluing, which in turn can affect details. So I found a nice big round base to stick the miniature on and now I'm just looking to see where I need to fill any gaps. This is something I don't always do with my miniatures, probably should do more often. Um, but for a miniature like this where I really want to give it uh, a nice job, um, I'm going to come in with some green stuff and I'm just going to fill up any gaps that probably shouldn't be there or look a bit odd. So this is a step I don't enjoy doing and I often skip it, but it is something I want to get better at as it will help create a much more finished product at the end of the day. Um, so all I'm doing here is simply rolling it into a sausage and then just poking it into any of the crevices I believe probably shouldn't be there or looks a little bit odd. Once I've popped that in, I then just come back and try and smooth it out with a smoothing tool. Keeping the smoothing tool wet will give you the best results. So I'm just gonna run it over where I've applied the green stuff and just trying to contour it around the, the miniature. So this is what it looked like after the green stuff stage. This is definitely a um, step that I need to work on. Um, 
and probably maybe do um, some videos on in the future so look out for that so after the green stuff and the glue had dried after a couple of days I based it with some sand and took it outside and sprayed it with a Halfords black spray primer and now the fun can start so I'm starting with an Avalanche sunset using a makeup brush and just basing the entire miniature with that colour. The next base colour is a scarlet red and I'm just going to hit a couple of areas on the miniature of this colour. I think it's important to know that each base colour I do I'm doing at least two to three coats uh, to make sure I get a nice opaque finish. So any areas that I want to look metal, I'm going to come in with a metal colour steel as the base colour. Okay, so all my main base colours are down now. So I'm just going to come in with an Agrax Earthshade literally to the entire model now I'm doing this to create uh, all the black lining essentially because I will go back over this with the colors that I've already gone down it's probably a long-winded way of doing things but I prefer to do this than a pin wash So once the wash is dry, I come back in with an avalanche sunset to all the panels, keeping the wash in the recesses. Again, I'll be coming, going over this with two to three coats. So this is a very long winded process. It's just something that I like doing. Um, it could be done quicker, uh, potentially doing a pin wash and stuff, uh, but I, I, this is just how I like to do things. And that's the beauty of painting miniatures, there really is no right or wrong way of doing things. Okay, so once I've finished with the Avalanche Sunset, this is a nice little trick I use to create a much more vibrant yellow. Avalanche Sunset's a really nice colour um, for basing. It, it goes over black really nicely, uh, it covers really easily, but it is a bit dull, it doesn't, it doesn't ping yellow. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a colour called Moon Yellow from the uh, game colour uh, which is Vallejo and it's a very thin paint just out of the bottle it's extremely thin so I'm just taking that and I'm glazing it over the miniature which it works very much like a, a yellow ink and what it does it just brings out that yellow it makes it stand out it makes it look really bright and vibrant it's just a nice little way of um, bringing that other land sunset up just up a few notches and so for the red then I'm just going to come back in with a scarlet red doing the same as I did with the Avalanche sunset just rebasing it but keeping the wash in the recesses So I'm going to start layering up the red. I'm going to start with a scarlet red. Um, I find red a real easy colour to, to layer up. You find you don't have to do any sort of glazing. It, uh, just, just a general layering can quite often give you a nice smooth transition. 
Um, so I'm just playing, working with relatively thin paint and just going over, say, 80% of the uh, the red that was put down and just to start my highlights. So I'm jumping around a little bit here, going from the red to the yellow. Um, but what I'm doing here is I'm going to start creating some shadows on the yellow to create some sort of contrast to make it look a little bit more interesting than just a, a yellow model. Um, so the mix is about four to one, so four yellow to one red, uh, creating a nice sort of orange color, thinning that right down to a glaze consistency and then just glazing it into the areas I feel would look cool with a little bit of shadow um, not really going for any sort of realistic lighting here it's just what I think looks right or looks cool again this step requires patience um, it takes a little while for you to really sort of see progress here but you just got to keep going over the areas um, that you uh, you feel needs some some shadow. So I'm going to come in here with some light yellow, and I'm basically just going to start highlighting now the yellow areas. So any sort of edges, uh, sort of tops of the panels, or anywhere I feel requires some highlight, I'm going to come in with this uh, light yellow again kind of work into a bit of a glaze consistency because I'm trying to sort of um, have a, a relatively smooth um, transition from the orange to the yellow to the bright yellow to, to the bright yellow going to come in with a ice yellow as a final highlight on the yellow areas uh, this will give a nice sort of ping finish to the yellow armor So to a couple of the metal areas, I'm just going to mix the metal colour steel and some blue ink together just to give a little bit of uh, interest to the metal areas, just a sort of a bluey tinge to a couple of areas on, the, on a miniature anyway. So the original paint job um, back in the day by GW uh, had some uh, sort of free hand on the the dreadnought, so I'm just going to emulate that. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm just going to come in with a black. I'm just drawing out where I want things like there's some flames on those shoulder guns, <clears throat> and we've also got some um, warning stripes and stuff like that. So I'm just going to sketch them out and then slowly fill them in with the black. So whilst I'm doing the black areas, I uh, just want to note that I didn't film myself highlighting up the red. Uh, so just a quick uh, rundown as to what I did there. Simply uh, came in with the scarlet red, then I built it up from that to like a almost a yellow, just to give a bit of a you know, sort of a contrast, smooth um, finish up to, to a sort of a yellow finish. I could definitely, and I think this is the case for the entire miniature, I could definitely push my contrast a lot more. Um, I chose not to in the end, uh, I just wanted to get the model finished and you know, get it in the cabinet, but, but yeah, I could definitely go back and push those shadows more, the highlights more, and really make it uh, pop a, a, you know, a, a great deal um, compared to what I actually did finish up with. But, you know, I got to a point where I was happy and 
least. It look, it look good. So this is what it looked like once I'd finished the freehand work. So not too bad, I just added some extra skulls and some uh, orc iconography there. So to highlight up the metal areas, I'm just going to come in with this steel colour from Vallejo. Uh, this one is from the Model Air range. So just coming to the finishing touches on the miniature now, uh, I'm just going to come in with a bright green to the plasma coils or whatever they're called on that uh, gun there on the shoulder and I'll just highlight that up uh, to give it a slight glowy effect. So coming in with this livery green. Uh, which is obviously a brighter colour, uh, just working on that and then I'll literally add yellow to that green now um, to, that, to, to give it a nice yellowy glow. So we're going to come back to the Agrax Earthshade and this time I'm going to use it like a glaze and it, literally I'm just going to work it on this skull which is on the banner pole. I'm just going to glaze it into the shadows where um, I think you know, it will define the skull. Uh, it takes a little while uh, but you just keep going backwards and forwards with thin layers. and. Uh, should shadow up the skull quite nicely. So I'm just going to finish this Gretchen driver now. Um, I didn't film the first part of the base coat in, uh, but I used a Death World Forest to base coat him, and then the Agrax Surfshade as a full body wash. And then I'm going to come in with Elysian Green and just highlight up uh, the miniature first. And then come in with Ogryn Camo for final highlight on the green. So I just quickly dot his eyes with some flat red and then I highlight them up with a scarlet red. So just to finish the driver off, I'm gonna paint the wires uh, that go in and out of his body uh, with a yellow, a blue, a red and a green. So once the driver was done, I called it day on the miniature and set him up with his little buddies there. I um, did the banner off camera. It's just a little bit fiddly to do with a camera in front of you, um, but I do have a video which I'll link here if you want to see how I paint banners. All in all though, I absolutely love painting this guy. He just took me back to my childhood. Um, I always wanted this miniature when I was a kid. So to be able to paint him, um, to try and follow the GW paint scheme as well, has just been fantastic. With that then guys, I'll leave you with a little manual spin around of the model and um, please 
leave comments below. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think about this little fella. Uh, and uh, the second edition or Road Trader era in general. So, yeah. Thank you very much. And I'll uh, see you in the next one. Stay safe, guys. Catch you later. That's it from this video, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching. If you're interested in seeing more content from this channel, please don't forget to hit the bell button. And guys, as always, stay safe. Catch you later.